Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So as you can see, today is Founders Day. I don't know any of those people. Well, I do know some of the people up there, but that was way before my time. Like 60-something or 50-something years. But this is our early picture of our church when it first started. It's in San Diego. So very cool thing here. Uh, established, or this was at least taken around 1929. So we've been here for a long time as a, as a church like body as a, as a follower of, of Christ. So um, just a wonderful thing for that to be here, that we're still here as a, as a facility, as a group of Christians worshiping together. Um, so like praise God for, for just that. So uh, before we begin, uh, begin our service with uh, worship through song, uh, let's pray. Father God, just thank you for this time that we have, that we can come together and worship with you, Father God. I pray for just our hearts, Father God, may you prepare to give you all, give you all of our praise, Father God. Prepare us for receiving your word, learning about your will. Just, God, I want to thank you just for your provisioning for us as, as the Sango Chapters Christian Church and the conference that we are associated with, that, that we are still a part of your plan, God, that you've willed it for us to still be here. Uh, what a blessing that is to be able to, to do your will, Father God. So I just pray that we just continue to keep you at the center of all of our ministries, the center of all of our Son of our lives, Father God. May we just continue to serve you in, in the capacity that you have set for us, Father. So I just thank you just for the time that we've had, the impact that we've had in the community, Father God. It was such a blessing uh, to be able to be a part of that. And we hope, Father God, we continue to be a, a glorifying force for you, Father. So I just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so if you're willing and able, please stand with me.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah indeed. I hear the hallelujah. Thank you for being with us this morning for this Founders Day uh, worship service. Uh, every uh, last Sunday of April uh, is when we celebrate Founders Day. Uh, because in uh, April of 1921 is when our conference uh, was uh, founded. And so our church uh, founding is more in February, and that would be in 1930. Actually, you're going to get an earful of history today, so I'm not going to talk about that too much right now. But I do want to uh, bring to your attention, because it is Founders Day, we have a special offering that we uh, usually collect on this day, and it's called the Founders Day Offering. And uh, it goes towards helping our retired ministers and widows, uh, um, ministers, widows, who, uh, with their medical uh, expenses. And so uh, if, you're, uh, if the Lord puts it on your heart to give, uh, please uh, do so. And that will go towards the retired ministers and the widows of our conference. And so um, we have a offering box uh, back there. Uh, it's a flowery box back there. Um, that's our offering box, and you can also give online, or you could send in a check uh, as well. But I just wanted to bring attention to Founders Day uh, offering. Uh, this coming week, I just want to bring uh, regular things going on. We have our prayer meeting uh, online uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Tuesday night Bible study is also online. A Wednesday night dinner at the Woos is in person. And then there's the Friday Bible study uh, this Friday and that's online and it's like a online only this time okay sometimes they come together so I'm glad there's people who could nod and let me know <laughs> make sure so a uh, couple of other things I just want to uh, bring up is that uh, as a church leadership we have decided that we are going to go back to joint worship services and we're going to do that starting in June so in the first Sunday of June we were going back to uh, joint worship services, and it's going to be uh, similar to what we had last Sunday. It'll be, um, what do you call them, captions? So you won't have to listen to English and Japanese going back and forth, but you won't have to read on, on certain Sundays, so uh, when it's in Japanese. And uh, Pastor Nokora and I are currently praying together about a message series that we can work on together. So it's not like how we started before where one was doing Ecclesiastes and I was, you know, doing the, uh, from the Psalms, right? We'll have a, a whole, you know, same message series we're working on uh, together. So uh, next month, uh, I'll be focusing more on part of the whys we're going to be doing this and some of our ministry focus as a church and also, uh, and so then, uh, yeah, so that will be the focus of the messages over the next month. On May the 29th, which is the last Sunday in May, uh, we are going to have our Memorial Day picnic once again, all right? So that will be at Admiral Baker Park. Uh, uh, Kevin, you can bring out the softball equipment again. <laughs> so that's going to be uh, on May 29th, and uh, we'll get you more details on that as the day approaches. So worship service there, and also our, our picnic to follow. So those are some of the things to look forward to. Um, before we go on, let's, let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we give you praise. Uh, it is so good to be able to worship you because you created us and you're the one who has redeemed us. You're the one who sustains us each day and you deserve praise and glory and honor. 
And what a blessing it is when we can come together with one heart to worship you. Who our voices, yes, but as we sang earlier, with our hearts and really with our lives. Father, we are so grateful that we can do this because of the perfect work of your Son, Jesus Christ. Even as we celebrated Resurrection Sunday last week, we are reminded daily and weekly as we gather together of Jesus' death for our sins upon the cross, his burial, and his resurrection on the third day. And it is with that uh, message of the resurrection that we have hope in you, that we have the promises that Jesus gave that we can hold on to, that through Jesus we have eternal life. So Father, we thank you that we can call you our Father and that we can gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask for your blessings upon our time together right now. We also pray your blessings upon the Nichigo service. But we also look forward to uh, being one church, Lord, not just within this building, but with the churches that are worshiping you uh, throughout the city and throughout the world. That you and you alone are the good shepherd that leads us. And as we celebrate these Founders Day, we are reminded of your faithfulness in continuing to guide us continuing to do your good work in our midst. Father, we do pray for those who are dealing with different health issues. We ask for your healing to be upon them. We also ask that you will continue to bring comfort to those who need comfort, whether it's due to the loss of a loved one or just because of the difficulties that they are facing right now in their lives. Father, but most of all, we pray for the salvation of the world. We pray for our families, we pray for our friends, we pray for our neighbors, we pray for our co-workers, our fellow students in school, those who do not yet know you, that they would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So to that end, we ask that you will use us, when the, give us and to be faithful to the opportunities that you give us in sharing about Jesus. And we thank you again for our time. And we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. As already indicated, today is our conference's Founders Day. And I put this photo up because in most of our historical books, this seems to be one of the first photos that shows up everywhere. And I'll get into a little bit more about the people here, but our conference's origin goes back to April of 1921. Thus, every year we commemorate our conference's founding on the last Sunday of April. But before I talk about our conference's history and its founding, I want to share with you some origin stories of places familiar to us. Let me know what you think the following is describing. Historically home to the Kumeyaay people, this place is frequently referred to as the birth birthplace of California, as it was the first site visited and settled by Europeans on what is now the west coast of the United States. Upon landing in the bay by this place in 1542, Juan Rodriguez Carrillo claimed the area for Spain, forming the basis for the settlement of Alta California 200 years later. The Presidio and Mission, founded in this place in 1769, formed the first European settlement in what is now California. In 1821, this place became part of the newly declared Mexican Empire, which we formed as the first Mexican Republic two years later. California became part of the United States in 1848, following the Mexican-American War, and was admitted to the Union as a state in 1850. Any guesses? San Francisco. San Francisco. If you guess that this was describing the beginnings and early history of San Diego, you are correct. I share this because places we live, places we work, and of course the places we worship and the ministries we support all have a beginning at some point in time. For instance, when we look at some local businesses that are here in San Diego, we learn that Solar turbines started as an aircraft company in 1927 and grew through several wars and the Great Depression 
and today is a key player in the 1,000 to 30,000 horsepower segment of the global gas turbine market, making it a world-class energy solutions provider. We learned that in 1985, seven former Linkabit colleagues met in Erwin Jacobs' home to create a company that would build quality communications. They developed code division multiple access, or CDMA, which is the basis for 3G, 4G, and 5G wireless communications. We learned that Illumina was founded in April 1998 by five people, of which two of them uncovered what would become Illumina's lead array technology at Tufts University, paving the way for their innovations in genomic sequencing. You're like, great. I learned a lot about tech stuff this morning. But in reading these origin stories of these companies, we discover another common theme, and that is they all have humble beginnings. In other words, they all started with a few people and became what they are today through the sacrificial giving of resources and time. It somehow doesn't seem right to place successful for-profit companies in the same sentence with sacrificial giving. But I hope you understand what I mean. Those who start a new thing, whether a municipality such as the city of San Diego, a company such as the ones I mentioned, or an organization or ministry such as even our church, gave sacrificially of their resources and time in order for it to grow. Today we look at the founding of our own church and our conference. We see the same things, humble beginnings and sacrificial giving. The conference we are a part of, known today as the OMS Holiness Church of North America, had its humble beginnings in April 1921. However, the core of founding members, Henry Sakuma, Paul or Goichi Okamoto, Hatsuno, Hatsuyano, George Yahiro, and Toshiro Hirano were meeting regularly since the summer of 1920, praying, discussing the faith, singing together, and studying the Bible. Reverend Ugo Nakata, who was their mentor at that time, described their experience together as being like the day of Pentecost as they were filled by the Holy Spirit. They were all dedicated Christians who emphasized sanctification or holiness as a cardinal theological experience. Thus the word holiness in our uh, conference's name. The ministry began at Trinity Church in Hollywood in April 1921. It was at that time that the original church was established, what we refer to today as the Los Angeles Holiness Church. Though the original name of the church is debated by the founding members of our conference, it is believed to have been the Toyo Senkyokai, which literally means the Oriental Missionary Church. I had a discussion of this, of how Oriental may not be very appropriate for today. It has different meanings, but that's how the church uh, began. In September of 1921, the group left the Hollywood area to relocate in the southwestern part of Los Angeles, 1564 West 36th Street, where the Japanese community was concentrated. Their first church met in a little frame house near the corner of 36th and Denker. Reverend Sadaichi Kuzuhara and his family, who came from Japan, lived in Yahiro's house on 35th place until 1924, when the church built a new sanctuary nearby. 1771 West 35th Place. Significantly, because of discriminatory, discriminatory laws which denied Ise or first generation citizenship and thus land ownership, Georgia Hero, as a Nise or, or one who was born in the United States American citizen, was the only one eligible to purchase the property for the new facilities. The group had to use the little frame house for their worship as well as their living quarters. Worship service was held in the living room and Sunday school in the bedrooms. Every Sunday, sheets separated the worship area from the storage space. They lived a simple and frugal life, often using newspapers instead of blankets to keep warm. 
September 1924 marked an epochal event as a new chapel and parsonage costing $3,500 were dedicated at 1771 and 1773 West 35th Place. Since the Kuzahara family was large, as you can see in the photo, the living quarters from the Yahiro property was physically moved to the new site for their use. In the same backyard, guest speakers periodically led tent evangelism, since no American denomination nor the Japan Holiness Church was backing them. They struggled to support themselves. Consequently, Sakuma and Okamoto were forced to quit Bible school temporarily and work as gardeners to support the church. Many of you know that many of the Japanese people who came over earlier, their primary jobs was either gardening or it was farming, if you know. And so thus in our church too, you'll find uh, that historically uh, that as well. Under the leadership of Kuzuhara, they lived together, worked together, and evangelized together. It was truly a communal lifestyle. A highlight of this period was a revival which occurred at the end of a prayer meeting in 1922. It sparked solid growth for the church. The early leaders were all dedicated Christians who attended Bible schools during the first decade of the church's history. In 1923, George Yashiro and Toshio Hirano graduated from the California Bible College in Hollywood. Jundo Kashtani graduated from the Huntington Park Training School that same year. Hatsuyano, who was attending a Bible school in Pasadena, married Yahiro after his graduation. Yahiro became the first Nisei minister for the Japanese American community in North America and the first minister of both the San Lorenzo and the Centerville Holiness Churches. Of course, this room is called Yahiro Hall, and of course, Reverend George Yahiro came here to minister as well. In 1924, Junno Kastani was sent to San Diego as an evangelist. That same year, Toshi Hirano was sent to Churlock and became the first pastor of that church. Due to certain difficulties, however, the church moved to Modesto two years later and continued its activities until World War II. The Menesto Church eventually became the second largest OMS church by the end of the war. Modesto Church is very interesting because we have historical ties to that church. I'm pretty sure that uh, Sharon's mom grew up in that area uh, because I hear stories from in the past from Mr. Uh, James Yamate and Kiyoshi uh, Yamate of their experiences when they were at the Modesto Church. And it also mentions in here about the Kiyoi family. And some of you know of Guy Kiyoi, um, and his, that's his family that's mentioned uh, and connected to the Menesco Church as well. In 1926, Toshio Hirano was sent to Hawaii to evangelize after his pioneering work in Turlock. As was often the case, he encountered many difficulties, including the death of his wife as well as financial problems. Yet God mercifully gave him helpers, Fui Kuroda, whose son Akira later became the first English-speaking Nisei pastor. Kenji Akahoshi and Hideo Tanji. With the help of these faithful lay members, the Waialaya Holiness Church was born in Honolulu in 1929. Another holiness group in Wahiawa held periodic worship services and specific special meetings. It was called the Wahiawa Holiness Church Group. In 1928, both Paul Okamoto and Henry Sakuma graduated from the Bible School in Pasadena, which was affiliated with the Pilgrim Mission. In 1929, Okamoto returned to Japan to a ministry in Hiroshima. Thus, all the founding members dedicated themselves to the Lord, attending Bible schools, and were sent to local holiness churches. Besides them, several others committed their lives to the Lord, either as laymen or as professionals during the first decade of the conference's existence. In 1930, the fourth OMS Holiness Church was established in San Diego, with Kichiro Fukuda appointed as its first pastor. The 19 members included seven charter members. By 1940, 10 churches comprised the OMS Holiness Church of North America. 
They were the Modesto, San Lorenzo, San Diego, Wahiawa, Honolulu, Baldwin Park, which is now San Gabriel, Centerville, which is now Santa Clara, Seattle, which we don't have anymore, Hilo, and San Fernando Holiness Churches. In many of these churches, the Nisei, or second generation, who were coming of age were becoming involved in young people fellowship groups, the forerunner of the post-war English-speaking departments. We exist today as the English-speaking department because of the second generation, of course, they wanted to speak in English, right? It was harder to understand Japanese. Thus, we see the humble beginnings and the growth that has come from the sacrificial giving of our founding members of our conference. We see the same pattern in our own church. As already noted, although the official history of our church begins in 1930, its roots extend back to 1923. A ministerial student from the Los Angeles Holiness Church, Junlo Kashitani, while vacationing in the El Cajon Valley, visited some Japanese families and shared Christ with them. On December 18, 1923, the first of these families, Tasaburo Mukai and his wife Fusae, became the first converts. Through the years that followed, Sadaichi Kuzuhara with ministerial students, Georgia Hiro, Henry Sakuma, Paul Okamoto, and Toshio Hirano traveled often from Los Angeles to minister to the new believers. The men took turns traveling 120 miles to hold monthly services and cottage meetings. By 1930, with the growth of believers, the San Diego Church was officially founded. The new church met in a house on 30th and Newton Streets. During the inaugural service on February 9, 1930, Kichiro Fukuda was installed as the first pastor. With a vision of sharing the gospel with the Japanese community, the members conducted evangelistic street meetings each Saturday night on the corner of 5th and Island Streets in downtown San Diego. The meetings included hymn singing, testimonies, and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by the lay members. One memorable aspect of those Saturday street meetings was the sound of a large bass drum, which provided the temple for the singing as well as informing the people of their presence. One of the things that was on my note was to bring the, we still have that drum, to bring that down from the attic and to hit it right now, but I forgot to, so anyways, it would have been fun. But anyways, that's what the things they did. Several people received Christ and joined the church as a result of this ministry. After six years of ministry in San Diego, Kichiro Fukuda was transferred to the Honolulu Holiness Church. The Lord had guided him in establishing a growing body of believers in San Diego. The Lord continued to provide for the needs of his church with the involvement of Sadahichi Kuzuhara, who passed through the church from Los Angeles. He was aided by a retired missionary from Japan, Mary Bell Griffith. Her background enabled her to minister in both Japanese and English. In 1937, Tameichi Okimoto was appointed pastor. He and his wife, Kirie, came from Japan to serve in San Diego. Notice that there's a gap between 1942 and 1945. It's called World War II. It's called relocation camp. So that's part of our history as well. During his ministry, they acquired property at 3042 Webster Street, which is dedicated as the San Diego Holiness Church in July 1940. Later on, Later on, they purchased the property next to it. I was going through this and I'm looking for a 3042 and I keep seeing a 3030. And I finally figured it out that they had bought you know, two properties there. And so that's why uh, we see the numbers there. One says 3042 and one says 3030. In 1966, under the pastoral leadership of Reverend Art Suneshi, our current church property was purchased from the First Covenant Church and we have ministered at this location now for 56 years. Yet even the humble beginnings and sacrificial giving by those who founded our conference and this church 
was preceded by a firm foundation that was laid by the apostles, founded upon Jesus Christ. The mission of the church as a whole is quite evident from Jesus' teachings to his disciples and in the instructions given to us by the apostles. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We have Jesus' authority mentioned here. And thus in that authority, Jesus sends out his apostles. He sends them out to make disciples, to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we skip this, but teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. So the teaching of Jesus is what te Jesus taught is part of what we are to do. And that is what we continue to do. The other point that Jesus made as they came together and the disciples asked him as he was after his resurrection. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And praise be to God that they did that so that the word spread. Jesus' instructions to his disciples were to obey him by sharing about him and his teachings by the power of the Holy Spirit. The church had its beginning in this manner. The Holy Spirit fell upon the 120 disciples who were gathered together on the day of Pentecost, and they proclaimed Jesus to the people who were gathered in Jerusalem on that day. Here is the result. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And with many other words he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then those who had received this word were baptized, and that day there were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. That is the image that we have as the church as it was birthed, birthed on that day of Pentecost. And to this day, the church which is made up of Jesus' disciples proclaims Jesus as the Christ and the Son of God to the world. It is something that we have received ourselves and we must pass it along to others. We are reminded, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. This morning, we recited the Apostles' Creed. We do that in, in a summary of the things that we truly believe about Jesus, about God, about the Holy Spirit, and their work in the church. And here is an early creed. We talked about this last Sunday, that this is an early creed, even written or, or wrote, wrote, written down before the Gospels were even written. And it was passed on. And Paul himself received this, it says, and he was delivering it to the believers in Corinth. Paul also writes to Timothy, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. On this Founders Day, we give thanks to God for our conference's humble beginnings 
We remember the sacrificial giving of our founding members and those who have preceded us. And most of all, of course, we remember the humility that Jesus Christ has displayed and his sacrificial giving of his very life for us. So we resolve to continue the work of evangelism and discipleship with passion, knowledge, and firm belief in God's word and instruction given to us so that we may entrust these to faithful people who will be able to teach others also. Simply put, we must continue to live according to God's word and share the truth concerning Jesus Christ with others. And we are called to do this together as a church family. Yes, there is strength in numbers, but we also remember that our conference started with five young people. They were in their 20s, folks. Five young people in their 20s. And our church started with one young person sharing Christ with some Japanese families while vacationing here. Let us pray for one another and encourage one another to carry on this work that has been handed down to us. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your work. In other passages of scripture, we are reminded, as Paul wrote to the people in Corinth, that he might have planted and another is watered, but all the growth is yours. And similarly, Lord, we see the good work that has started in our conference in 1921 was even preceded by prayer in 1920. And the ministry that we call here that was officially founded in 1930, the planting of the seed started back in 1923. But Father, we are here today because of your good work because of the people who have planted, because of the people who have watered, because of the people who continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and for those who received it and continue to grow in their faith. We use the word continue a lot, but because it is your work, and it's a continual work that you do, and it is according to your faithfulness and in the faithfulness of those who have committed their lives to follow you. Father, as people who live here today in April, on April 21st, 4th, 2022, we ask that you will continue to do your good work in us, that we would remember these things and also remember the calling that you have given to us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and to make disciples of all nations. We thank you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. If you are willing and able, if we could stand together as we sing the other song. Thank you.
received the benediction or good word of the Lord. It's from 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 17. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. Amen.